Hey, what's up you lot? Path here, coming at you with uh, critical mass in terms of beard length and hair length. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about why there isn't a commonly used unit for momentum. As well as this, I want to create a unit for momentum. So stick around. Uh, if you enjoy this video, then don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's get into it. The international system of units or système international d'unité, how's my French? often shortened to SI units, consists of seven basic units and lots more combined ones, and these form the basis of the metric system. Other unit systems exist, but SI systems are probably the most commonly used in physics and also the ones I am familiar with, so those are the ones we're going to be discussing today. Now, a unit, technically a unit of measurement, is a conventionally agreed magnitude of the quantity it measures. Now, this sounds like a complicated definition, so let's break that down. A unit is a fixed amount of a particular quantity. For example, a centimeter is this, this particular distance here. This distance, or nearly enough exactly that distance, is defined as a centimeter, and that definition is chosen by convention, by lots of scientists gathering together and agreeing that that's what a centimeter is defined as. Like I said, the SI system consists of seven so-called base units. The second, which measures time, the meter, which measures distance, the kilogram, which measures mass, the kelvin, which measures temperature, the amp, which measures current, the mole, which measures amount of substance, and the candela, which measures luminous intensity. Or at least this is true in 2020 when I'm filming this video. Fun fact, in 2019, the definitions of all of these quantities were slightly rejigged and changed so that a kilogram before 2019 was not the same thing as a kilogram after 2019. If you want to learn more about this rejigging, redefinition business, I'll leave some links in the description below, and maybe I'll make a video about it in the future as well. Anyway, aside from the seven base units that we've mentioned here, all other units that measure all other quantities can somehow be broken down into different combinations of these seven base units. For example, we have the Newton, which measures force, we have the Joule, which measures energy, we have the Watt, which measures power, and so on and so forth. But then this begs the question, why isn't there a specific unit for momentum, which is actually a really important quantity in physics? At high school level, we get taught two conservation laws in physics, the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. And the conservation of energy isn't even technically a thing. It should really be the conservation of mass energy, but that doesn't get mentioned until much later. Whereas conservation of momentum, or at least conservation of linear momentum, is studied really hard at high school level. And yet energy has its own unit in the SI system, which is the joule, but momentum doesn't. Every time we're talking about momentum, we have to constantly write out kilograms times meters per second every single time. Or, you know, certain variations of this, like grams, centimeters per second, or whatever. But we've got a unit of mass multiplied by a unit of distance divided by a unit of time. Why are we longing our lives out like this? What's the point? So I did some digging, admittedly some very shallow digging, to try and figure out why momentum was never given its own unit. And I found this answer on Stack Exchange given by a user named Conifold. Somebody asked the question, why is there no named unit for momentum, but there is one for energy? And like I said, I found this response really interesting. There is a historical reason, but it was not a fluke of history. The underlying reason is that energy comes up in non-mechanical, that's thermal and electric contexts, whereas momentum does not. Derived alternative, Newton meter in SI, did not arise naturally in such contexts. And alternative units, like calories, were used prior to the discovery of the general energy conservation law. It made sense to replace them with named standardized units. Klein's science of measurement is a nice historical survey. Standardization and naming of units happened in two waves. First started during the French Revolution at the behest of Talleyrand, known as bishop turned politician, who later managed to serve as foreign minister under both Napoleon and Bourbons after Waterloo. God, I love a good Bourbon. French Academy appointed a committee on weights and measures, including Condorcet, Lagrange, Laplace, Mange, and unofficially Lavoisier, before he was guillotined, came up with a foundation of SI. At that point, only the base units of length, time, weight, and temperature received single names. The derived units of area, volume, speed, acceleration, work or energy, torque, momentum, etc. were combinations of the base ones, even if they had commonly named units like liters or knots. Future kilogram, called kilograph, was the unit of weight, that is force, not mass. Mechanical energy and momentum received equal treatment. The second wave started in the 1860s and formalized by 1880s in both SI and its competitor CGS was meant to catch up with developments in thermodynamics and electromagnetism and gave us ohms, volts, farads, watts, etc. 
Kilograv, renamed into kilogram, became the unit of mass. The unit of force was named dyne in CGS, from Greek dynamis, meaning force, and Newton in SI, what of energy. Its mechanical manifestation received no new attention, but in 1864, Clausius suggested erg, from Greek ergon, to work, to replace calorie as a unit of thermal energy, a remnant of the by then discredited caloric of phlogiston theory. It was adopted in CGS. The unit of power, watt, was suggested even before Joule by Siemens in 1882 to replace Watt's own horsepower unit used to measure output of steam engines. Siemens was an electrical engineer. Joule himself was honoured by a unit name for determining the mechanical equivalent of heat. Momentum was just out of luck. So that is one potential plausible explanation as to why momentum doesn't have its own unit. And I think it sounds fairly believable, right? I'm gonna do some more research and let you guys know in a future video or maybe on my community tab on my channel whether or not I find anything to either contradict this or to support it. But now, let's get to the fun part of the video. There isn't a commonly used unit for momentum in the SI system, so let's make one. Remember, we want to create a unit that saves us from having to write kilograms times meters per second every single time. We want something that's short and convenient, and ideally also allows us to speak the unit of momentum faster than saying kilograms meters per second. Depending on how you say it, kilograms meters per second has at least eight syllables. And even more if you say kilograms times meters per second. We want something a little bit more snappy. Ideally, we'd also pick a unit that can be abbreviated in English rather than Greek. We've seen a couple of units abbreviated in Greek, for example, the letter omega is used to represent the ohm, which is the unit of resistance, but most others are abbreviated in English, so we'll put that constraint on ourselves as well. Additionally, we want to try and avoid letters in our abbreviation of the unit of momentum that are commonly used with momentum in physics problems. This is not always possible, of course, but it's a nice thing to try and work toward, because if we don't do this, then things can get very confusing very quickly. For example, you might have tried to solve some physics problems that relate the work done by, say, a machine, and specifically talking about the work done by that machine per unit time, how much work an engine is doing, for example, per unit time, and this is the power of that engine. Power is measured in watts, and we often signify work with the letter W as well. So we have to try and distinguish between W for watts and W for work. And quite often we just have to do this based on context rather than any difference in the way that we write the two Ws. So we want to try and avoid this problem with this new unit of momentum that we're going to be creating in this video. Now, lots of units are named after scientists. The Newton, the Pascal, the Watt, the Joule, the Ohm, the Volt, the Farad. You get, you get the gist of it. And I think you can also see where I'm going with this. The new unit of momentum that we're inventing right now in this video, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky and name it after myself. Because, you know, this is about the only useful contribution I'm going to make to the world of physics anyway. However, there is a problem. The first two letters of my surname are GH. Now, if we use GH as the abbreviation for our unit of momentum, then it might look like we're saying that momentum is given in giga H, whatever H stands for, because capital G is often used to represent giga, and we're, we're trying to avoid that problem, remember? And if I use my first name, the first two letters of my first name are PA. But PA is already an abbreviation for an SI unit, it's the Pascal. Instead, I propose we create a unit known as the path G, abbreviated PG. Snappy, only two syllables, path G. Hopefully memorable if you watch my videos, if you like my videos. Fairly unique abbreviation, and hopefully not too difficult to confuse with other symbols that we would use with momentum. I know, I know momentum is often signified with a letter P, but it's a lowercase p, so I'm gonna let that one slide. And also, the best thing about this unit is that it does a fair amount to stroke my ego. So what I'm suggesting is that one path G is equal to one kilogram meter per second. Now, obviously, I'm joking. Please don't go around using the unit of path G as a unit for momentum instead of kilograms meters per second. Or, you know, do if you want to. I'm not seriously suggesting that we name a unit of momentum after me, but what I am saying is that we should create one. One that's snappy, one that's short, one that saves a lot of writing and speaking, and one that's memorable and not easy to confuse with other commonly used letters that we'd be using when talking about momentum. I've just thought of a small benefit to creating a unit for momentum that's shorter than a kilogram meter per second, that's also equivalent to a kilogram meter per second. It might serve as a good teaching tool, specifically when talking about Newton's second law of motion. 
Many of you will have learnt that Newton's second law of motion states that the force on an object is equal to the mass of that object multiplied by the acceleration it experiences. However, as I've talked about in a previous video, this is only true for when the mass of that object is constant. A more accurate version of Newton's second law of motion tells us that force, the force on the object, is equal to the rate of change of the object's momentum. In other words, the change in momentum of that object divided by the time taken for that momentum change to occur, assuming the rate of change of that momentum is constant. If not, we'd have to go into calculus and we don't want to do that. But basically the force on an object is equal to the change in momentum of the object divided by the time taken for that change in momentum to occur. And it might be helpful for a student to see that written in terms of the unit for momentum, surprise, surprise, the path G, divided by the unit of time. Because then this shows us that a force can be expressed in terms of a momentum unit divided by a time unit, as opposed to kilogram meters per second divided by seconds, which then becomes kilogram meters per second squared. Using this version, kilogram meters per second squared, really helps the student link the fact that a force can be equal to a mass multiplied by an acceleration, but not necessarily a momentum divided by a time, or specifically change in momentum divided by time interval. So I think there is some merit in terms of pedagogy, in terms of teaching students, in creating a unit for momentum. But maybe I'm just trying to justify creating my own unit for momentum. Either way, what I want you to take away from this video is that when we create a new unit, there are a lot of considerations to be made. The fact that this unit should be abbreviated in a short, snappy way. The fact that the abbreviation shouldn't consist of letters that are similar to other ones that are used in these problems, or for that matter, match other units already in existence. And there are a fair amount of other considerations as well. And we've barely scratched the surface. So I have a lot of respect for all the scientists who come up with units like this, all the metrologists, not just the people doing the uh, hardcore physics. It's everybody that works around them that's really important as well. The experimental physicists, the computational physicists, and the metrologists. Together, everybody works to make physics a better subject, one that's more consistent, one that's more interesting, and one that's more usable. And also, i just really like to see a new unit for momentum. Please, please. If you're watching SI overlords, please. Anyway, that's it from me. That's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to be notified when I upload videos, please hit that bell button as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.